Okay guys, so installing RAM, something that should be very simple and it isn't. <laughs> so here's the RAM kit. When you are installing a RAM kit, try really hard not to touch the radiator. Because if you touch the radiator, if you push it in, this is what may happen. Like I guess it's not lighting up. Um, I, I think I broke it. <laughs> I think I broke the RAM stick. Wow, that was easy. Um, so some radiators may be not as easy to break. Some radiators break easily. This, for example, G-Scale is notoriously weak. So whenever you install this RAM or any RAM, try whenever possible to push onto the board, onto this corner, and this corner. Try not to push into the radiator, otherwise you may break it. Even if you don't break it, the radiator touches the elements inside and if you push on it, there is a good chance that the glue inside will unstick and you will have worse cooling. So to push these corners, they are very sharp. It's not easily done. To do this, you actually need two pieces of paper. So you take one piece of paper and you fold it into four and you grab another one like that so two pieces of paper you'll be pushing your arm in like this you put a piece of paper here otherwise it's very sharp and you will not be able to because your finger will really really hurt once you start you have to move these locks on two sides open these locks have to be open then you calculate this bar in the middle and this opening here has to align with that bar. Very simple. Then you put your RAM in evenly. It has to fall. Free fall has to be in this groove. Then you take your two pieces of paper, put them on the sides, on the PCB, and baby steps. Easily, easily, step by step. Don't push them all together. Baby steps, one left side, one right side. Small, small steps, you push them in. Left, right, left, right, left, right. Stronger and stronger. Until they both click. Once they clicked, it's done. Because if you push them together, it will not work. The resistance is too high. But using baby steps, it's easier. Now check this out, you see? You see how sharp? that PCB is, it isn't possible to do it with your fingers. You will just cut your fingers really bad. So those pieces of paper help. Sometimes you may even fold them in eight, like this even. Depends on the motherboard because sometimes resistance are so simple. If you need to remove them, open one lock, open the second lock, take it out. So I've shown you the G-Skill memory and you can clearly see the PCB so you don't even need to touch the radiator. However, if you take the Ballistics, Ballistics Max, the PCB is from this side, you can, like, guys, yes, you see, you cannot even touch it. So when you're using something like Ballistics Max, you have to push into the radiator, which is bad, but you don't really have a choice. So whenever you do it, try to grab it fully like to have as much surface area grabbing the radiator as possible so the pressure is even that's the only thing that will work otherwise you see the PCB is not there another ballistics memory which is better in this regard you do see the PCB here so the radiator is a little smaller so whenever you have something like this and usually it's like this try to push into the PCB not the radiator Otherwise, uh, what happened to me may happen to you. You see this ballistics memory module and on the sides there are gaps. So I pressed into the radiator and on both sides, from two sides, left and right, there are gaps between the chip and the radiator. If there is a gap, there is bad cooling. And, and these gaps in particular are very big. So it means the side chips are not actually being cooled well. 
which is very, very, very bad. The contact was okay initially, but after I reinserted memory module for like maybe 10 to 15 times, time after time, I pressed on the radiator multiple times and uh, it just got disconnected. And now you've got this problem. The only way to deal with this is actually to put your RAM inside of the liquid nitrogen LN2 and then the heatsink will just be removed automatically because of the extreme cold but i don't have liquid nitrogen and if i forcefully remove it i will damage it and i will break it i know it so i'm trying to insert a syringe a small insulin syringe and use some noctuar thermal paste so this is not the best way but at least something i can do so i inserted the syringe inside of that gap inside and uh, trying to fill it with a thermal paste very bad approach but the only thing i can do currently it's so bad it's so bad you can do this but still you have some gaps and the syringe is not narrow enough i took the smallest one and still it's not enough and uh, either you go in and you stay with the thought that there are a couple of chips that do not contact the heat spreader and it may work it may work they may not contact the heat spreader it will be fine but if you want things to be perfect you need direct contact from all sides, fortunately, yeah. Maybe I'll try liquid nitrogen with a chance to break this module. Maybe I'll still keep it the way it is, not yet decided. Similar videos on this channel, PC assembly, computers, electronics. So I'm gonna go and check those out. Thanks for watching and stay tuned.